DaVinci Resolve just added something I've been wanting for a long time, and that's their new Remove Silence feature that just got introduced in DaVinci Resolve 20.2. And now you can easily change these parameters here to remove silences in both the audio and video in your clips. As you can see right now, I'm zoomed in. All these highlighted red areas are all the parts that are gonna get cut out and all the clips are gonna ripple together essentially just quickly eliminating gaps. And the best part is not only are you doing this in the edit page, but these parameters also allow you to change how silent or how long the silence is for what you want to remove. And while this pop-up window is here, you can still play through the clips at a lot of speeds, create rolling shutter, which I hate. So you can actually hear the audio before you commit to this action. I'm going to cancel this right now. Let me show you how to get into that in DaVinci Resolve 20.2. You're gonna to wanna to make sure that you have a clip selected. Now this could work for just audio or video and audio that's linked, as you can see here. Once selected, go up to clip up at the top and then you're gonna scroll down to where it says audio operations. Move to the right and then go to ripple delete silence. Now by default, there's no keyboard shortcut. However, I assigned one myself, alt shift A, so that without having to go up here, I could just have my clip selected and do my keyboard shortcut. But if you don't have the keyboard shortcut, the moment you click it here under clip audio operations, ripple delete silence, it'll open up the remove silence window. Now I'm gonna zoom into my clips. Now this lets you really fine tune what you're cutting out. As you can see right now, there's this little piece here that didn't cut out and that was just my phone mount tapping the table. But that seems lower than pretty much any of my dialogue. So I'm actually gonna change my threshold till it covers that. So any of those little table taps will be removed. Oh, this one didn't. So maybe I gotta change it up a little bit more. As you can see, I'm going through more areas just to see if there are any other parts that are not gonna get cut out. But this seems to be pretty much the majority of it. Let's see what's here. A little mouth click right there. Now, the main thing you wanna do with your threshold is make sure you're not cutting out any of your dialogue or anything that you want that's important. All right, so now it looks like I pretty much got almost everything I want. Now, you can also change the pre-head and post-tail. Pre-head is how much time before anything that's above the threshold plays. And you can choose by frames. I like to do two frames. I feel like that's pretty comfortable. We could try it out here. And I hope that when, and I hope that two frames seems to be my sweet spot for what I like. I definitely wouldn't go to zero. One frame is okay, but if you're starting with a word that has a F sound, it can sometimes get cut out. So I like to do two frames before what's above the threshold. Now with post tail, it's the ending. Now, because a lot of times the ends of words are softer, especially if it's an S or if it's a D sound, I like to have my post tail to three frames, sometimes even four. I'm gonna go with four. And then the minimum to strip is how short of a time you wanna cut out. Now, I found that if you go too short, it's gonna cut out the tiniest pauses, which then sounds a little unnatural. So you wanna make sure that you're not cutting out any small little pauses that sound okay. Five frames to me for the minimum to strip seems pretty consistent for my voice for my recording. And then if you click on crossfade audio, it'll crossfade audio clips that are cut. I tend to not use this, but let me just check it so you can see what it looks like. All right, so now we have everything how we want it. Let's remove and I'll zoom in. Now you'll see here, every clip now has this crossfade, which if you have more room noise, this can help mask those little imperfections of cuts. So the sound isn't jarring between the two clips. It's actually not a bad feature. Most people might tend to use it, but I record in a very acoustically treated room. So I tend not to check that box. So I'm gonna undo, select my clip, hold shift, alt A for my keyboard shortcut. And then all my parameters that I had before stayed the same. So if you're doing content for YouTube or social media, for example, like me here, this is a setup that I often use. You should take note of these settings so that you can use them if it's gonna be a recurring audio setup. Now, DaVinci, if you're watching this, I would really like if you could actually save presets for these parameters. So that I could easily put solo podcast setup or if I was in a different room or a different setup that had a consistent sound and I found my sweet spot, I could save that preset. But for now, I'm actually just writing down the parameters for my different recording setups. I'm gonna uncheck crossfade, click remove, and now that just saves so much of my time. DaVinci had a version of this prior to this update, but it honestly sucked. Now, this is exactly what we've been wanting. Just DaVinci, please add that preset option. So there you have it. That's the new Ripple Delete Silence feature in DaVinci Resolve 20.2. Now on this channel, I do have a DaVinci Resolve playlist with a lot more tutorials, so please make sure to check that out. Hopefully this video helped you. If it did, please drop a like on this video, comment below if you have any questions, and please make sure to subscribe. I have a lot more videos coming soon. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.